All right, so let's get right back into it here with step 21 of our building a quiz, which is focusing on accessibility. So step 21 says, keeping in mind best practices for form inputs, give each input an appropriate type and name attribute. And give the first input a placeholder attribute. We need to give them a type and a name on all of the inputs. So the first one is going to have a type, a name, and a placeholder. Type equals type equals, and we want it to be name. Uh, type equals text, I think. And then the name equals, and for the name, we're going to say name. And then placeholder, placeholder equals John Doe. Okay, so now that one should be done. Now we want to do that for the other two, but we only want the type and the name attribute. So we're going to go down here and paste type equals email and name equals email. And then the last one, we want the same again. So we paste and the birth date type equals date and name equals D-O-B. Let's check. And we have passed that indeed. And you can see straight away our date of birth one has changed to a date input. Okay, step 22. Even though you added a placeholder in the first element in the previous lesson, this is not actually the best practice for accessibility. Too often, users will confuse the placeholder with an input value. They think there's something already there. Remove the placeholder text element, relying on the label being the best project, the best practice. So we want to get rid of our placeholder. Okay, so bye bye placeholder. It was good to know you. And there we have 22 pass. So it's best not to use a placeholder from an accessibility point of view. 23. Arguably, DOB is not descriptive enough. This is especially true for visually impaired users. One way to get around such an issue without having to add visible text to the label is to add text only a screen reader can read. Append a span element with a class of S or only to the current text content of the third label element. Okay, so span element to the current text of the label. Okay, so we want to app append it inside here. So, oh, made a mistake there. Okay, so we want to go span. Let's close out our span so we don't forget. Let's not make any silly typos. And inside the span here, we want to have a class, span, class, equals s or dash only. All right, so now we have a span inside the label. And that should be good to go. On to step 24, and here comes the donation again. Within the span, add the text date of birth. Okay, that's easy enough. Date of birth. And let's check. And we have passed that as well. Wow, we're flying through it today. Touch wood, touch wood. Anyway, the dot SR only text is still visible on the screen. There's a common pattern to visually hide text for only screen readers to read is to give it the following CSS properties. So you set the position absolute, width to one pixel, height to one pixel, padding zero, margin minus one, overflow hidden, all of this stuff is going to make it so that no one is able to see it except for screen readers. So we're going to say dot s or only. Open up our curly brackets 
And inside the curly brackets, we want all of this. So copy and paste. And now that's made it disappear. I can't see it, can you? There you go, it's gone. On to step number 26. In the second section element, add two div elements with a class of question block. Okay, so we want to have two divs with a class of question block, and that's in the second section. So div class equals question, question dash block, then close our div, and then close our div, slash div, all right, I'm using the wrong keyboard here. Let me just switch to the right keyboard. First of all, I'll copy this and paste and get my better keyboard going. Okay. Two, three, there we go. Now, in each question block element, add one key element with text of incre incrementing numbers starting at one and one field set with a class of question. Okay, so here inside this first div, we tab in, we have a P and the P is going to have one and then close our P and the second div, we're gonna do the same. So we'll have a P element and that's going to have two then close our P and, and one field set with a class of question. Okay, so in here we want to have field set class equals question. And then we're going to close our field set. F-I-E-L-D-S-E-T, okay? And let's put that field set into the second div as well, right here, like that. Now we have some nice little boxes there. Okay, element text of one, oh, okay. I see I've put a space there, I'm so sorry. And there we go, that is correct. Now, fantastic, on to the next one. 27. Each field set will contain a true or false question. Within each field set, nest one legend and one UL element with two options. Okay, so inside the field set now, and we're going to nest one legend element. Close that. And then we're going to have an li, no, we're going to have a ul. Inside the ul, we have li, close the li, that's one, and we need to have two. So li and close the li. Then we want to close our ul. We need to do that in both field sets. So we're gonna copy those five lines of code, bring them down to our second field set and make sure everything is indented nicely. Check our code and we have passed. Wow, 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 wow. On to number 28. Give each field set an adequate name attribute and then give both unordered lists a class of answers list. Finally, use legend caption content of field set by placing a true false question as the text content. Oh, so I guess we can write our own questions. First of all, each field set gets an adequate name. Okay, so field set name equals, and I guess this is question one. And then the next field set is going to have the same thing, but it's going to be question two. Copy, paste, and instead of question one, we're gonna say question two. Each unordered list, a class of answers list. Okay, so class equals 
answers hyphen list. All right, there we go. And we want to copy that and put it in the next unordered list as well. Make sure I have my space there. Now, use the legend caption the content of the field set by placing a true false question. Mm. Okay. Cats like to eat cheese. Did I just spell cheese wrong? That is exceptionally embarrassing. Okay. And the second legend, fish like to eat peanut butter. I don't think it's really a HTML question, but that should be it. Yes, we have pasta. I like the way the captions work on the legends. Very good. Step number 29. Provide the functionality of true false question. We need inputs, which do not allow both to be selected at the same time. Within each list element, nest one label element, and within each label element, nest one input with the appropriate type. Well, I do know that the appropriate type is going to be radio, but wow, is this getting a little bit confusing. Okay, so within each list element, okay, here, we're going to have a label uh, and close my label, which I have spelled atrociously, I'm so sorry, label and close, okay. And inside each label, nest one input with the appropriate type, okay, input, Type equals radio. Uh, I think I don't need to close that one, right? It's self-closing. So have a label copy inside each list element. So if I just paste this, paste this, paste this, there we go, and that should be okay. And it is, so onto our Last one for today, number 30. Add an ID to all of your inputs so you can link your labels to them. Give the first one an ID of Q1A1. The rest of them IDs Q1A2, Q1, Q2A1. Q okay, confusing. Okay, so we're adding the ID to the radio input. ID equals, wait. ID equals Q1A1. Okay, copy that. The next input ID is going to be Q1A2. The next input ID is going to be Q2A1. Okay, and then the last input ID is going to be Q2A2. All right, it's a, it's a lot to keep track of, but there we go, we do have it there in the end. Fantastic, finish step 30. I'll be back with the next 10 steps very soon. Thank you all for watching. If you liked it, hit like. Uh, if it helped, let me know down below in the comments, or if you have any other questions, fire them down below as well. Bye-bye.